for someone to stand up and start getting a message and then I remember, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for those of you that haven't met me yet, um, my name is Emily Townsley and I am a junior here and I'm studying elementary special <coughs> education. And so uh, before we start tonight, we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise. So I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and everybody close your eyes. Yeah. Go ahead and we're just gonna take some deep breaths to just center ourselves, just breathe in. And let it out. And breathe in. And let it out. Okay, you guys can open your eyes. Alright, that was mostly for me, but uh, thank you for all participating in my little selfish relaxation exercise. So, I appreciate it a lot. Okay, but really though, before we start, I'm going to have you guys go ahead and we're going to start it off the right way and we're going to bow our heads and we're going to lift our prayers up to God. So, if you'll bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blessing it is for us to be able to come together as the body of Christ and to share in your word. You offer us so many gifts as we dive into your word. And I ask that as we take this time together, that we might see a little bit more of what it means to be like you and to follow you faithfully and with abandon tonight. I just ask that as the words come from my mouth, that they come directly from you, God. And in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Okay, awesome. So we're going to go ahead and look back at the passage again, because just to kind of make sure that we definitely know what we're talking about here. So like we, they said earlier, James 1, verses 20 through two, 22 through 25, you didn't hear it. And it says, do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so to give us a little bit of a perspective on this, I'm going to have us do a little bit of a flashback to high school. And I know some of you are like, ah, oh, terrible idea, like bad hair, braces, all that kind of stuff. But just for a second, follow me. And you're sitting on the couch. It's a lazy afternoon on a Friday, let's say. And if you're anything like me, you've got Law & Order SVU on, you got some Cheetos and some Diet Coke, you're living it up. And um, mom comes in, and she like sees that the dishes haven't been done in like a week, and that's your job. And she says, hey, hon, would you mind um, going ahead and heading into the kitchen when you get the chance and doing the dishes for us? I'm like, cool, Mom. Yeah, this episode's going to be over in like five minutes. I'll get up. I'll go do the dishes. And she's like, thank you. And my mom's sitting over here. She's probably like, amen. And, um, <laughs> and so she goes off. And then like, you know, five minutes later, dun dun, new episode. Like, they always do that. And so we keep going. And, and I keep watching. And suddenly, I'm hooked on this next episode. Mom comes back in 20 minutes later. Hey, hun, I, I asked you to do the dishes. They kind of haven't been touched, like, at all. So could, would you mind, you know, going in there really fast and getting that done? I'm like, yes, right right after this. I'm a little invested right now, but I'll, I'll get to you in a minute. And she goes off, does her thing. I keep watching, and, like, I'm so, I'm so intensely, like, droned into this episode right now, just drooling, watching, like, so focused <laughs> on what's happening. And then Mom comes back in, and she sees that I have not moved an inch off of the couch comes over, like she's agitated, and she turns off the TV. And you get like offended. Like you're like, you're like, they haven't given the verdict, there are five minutes left. Like, could you not wait for me to finish this? Does this sound like a familiar tune for anybody, like your parents' interactions? Yeah, yeah, a couple hands. Well like, this is even more of a familiar tune if we look at it with our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And so, the way I see it, sometimes we just need to know that God wants us to turn off the TV and put feet to our faith. And that's kind of what this message is about tonight. And I know Jeremiah said last week that we definitely don't talk about feet enough in the church. So I just wanted to keep that ball rolling and just bring it back for at least one more week. So we're going to talk a little bit about feet and do some feet activities. <laughs> so um, if we're um, talking about putting feet to our faith, basically what this is meaning is not sitting and being like a consumer of the church and not just like listening to what other people have to say about God, but being active participants in what it means to live out your faith and follow Christ. And so in verse 22, it, like it flat out says, I love it, it just says, do what it says, period. No semicolon, no like conditions may apply after the next commercial, no excuses, like just do what it says. And I know that none of us are perfect Christians, like I'll be the first to admit, 
not perfect. Thank you, not perfect, not standing here to say that I am perfect at all. And we all need to improve in certain areas, And but there are ways to take action, to sort of do what God's calling us and to listen to that voice that is whispering to us to follow his word. And so to help us out with this, I kind of have an image that I got from my pastor. Oh, there it is, okay. And um, I, a pastor gave us this image at the church, and so I'm gonna kind of talk about what it means and it kind of has a little bit to do with spiritual disciplines. And um, if you think of the Ten Commandments, I heard um, Dr. Clapper, if you haven't had him, he's wonderful. He shortened kind of the Ten Commandments. Can basically, if you just love God and love others, then you're basically following God's law. And so I think that it fits into this model really, really well. Just a very simplified, but still like loving God and loving others. So, um, and as you see, it's, te it's 2D, obviously, so it's on the screen, and it's a vertical triangle going up, but I like to picture it like I'm at the bottom of the triangle, and then it goes outwards, like you're taking steps into each of the different levels, and I'm not going to get too far out here, so but, um, <laughs> so, and that'll make a little bit more sense when I start going into each of the one of them. So the bottom triangle is personal, and the way I kind of remember it is personal is the tiniest triangle, because the only two that can fit into that one is you and God. You can't have your best buddy or your like mom or anything getting you into the personal one. You are the only one that fits into that. And this signifies the time that we spend alone with God. And this is really important to building this relationship with him and showing our love for him, which is one of his commands is to love him and follow only him. So um, if we want to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word, like it says in this verse, we have to first learn what it means. So in James chapter 1, 8, another, another verse from this chapter, it says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Which, that's a pretty good promise. I mean, in college, a lot of the time, it doesn't feel like we're ever prosperous or successful. So it's really nice to have that promise given to us. If we just take our time to read this every day, that we will be that way. And I know that sometimes it's really hard to, in college, carve out time to sit with your Bible, or to meditate on the Word of God, or to pray just by yourself. Um, but I have this story um, from the summer camp that I used to work at, or that I still work at, I guess. Um, we go over the seven, uh, seven habits of highly effective teens, and the seventh habit is sharpen the saw. And we tell this story, there are two lumberjacks on separate sides of a lake, and the first lumberjack, they're all trying to get their wood chop chopped up before winter starts so they can keep their homes warm. And the first lumberjack jack is chopping all day and he takes no breaks. And he looks over at the second lumberjack who every hour sits down for 10 minutes. And he's like, what a lazy bum over here not cutting his wood. I'm gonna have so much more wood than him because he's taking so much time sitting down. The day goes on and he keeps working really, really hard and never stops. And the other guy st continues to stop for 10 minutes every hour. By the end of the afternoon, the guy, the second guy's pile is humongous, and the guy over here has barely got enough to keep him through December. So he walks over and he says, I don't get how this works. How, if I am chopping nonstop all day and taking no breaks, are you finishing faster than me and making more wood for your family? And he says, well, every, um, every, ten, every hour for 10 minutes, I sit down and I sharpen my saw. You just can't see it. He's sitting there and sharpening his saw so that he will be more efficient in cutting his wood. And that's what this is all about. This is, this is how we sharpen our saw. This is how we take that time that we carve out and it makes us go out into our days and do better works. And so that's kind of what, how I see the personal and taking that time to be with God and listen to what he has to say through his word. And so the next piece on the triangle is one-on-one -on -one or small group. And this one's really special because we offer a way to do it like through the mentorships that we have at the university with Salt and Light and the Peak, but also it could be like joining a crew Bible study for like a small group or meeting with a professor that you trust a lot and that you could talk to about these kind of things. Basically, the important part to this is forming those deep Christian relationships and those close bonds with friends in your Christian community. Um, a verse I found for this one is um, Matthew 18, 20. It says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And um, so this could mean like go down to the park, grab a coffee and talk, with Roman, talk about Romans with a friend or 
go to go to one of the crew Bible studies or go to Salt and Light or join a small group Bible study at your church. It's about those like deep <coughs> conversations where you really delve into the word and consider it with other people. And the real key to this is forming relationships that are completely and entirely centered around Christ that keep you accountable and also help you grow your heart for God because that's what the point is. We're supposed to challenge each other and to be able to build those relationships where we're really truly connected to other people with Christ at the center of it. And so the next little piece is church. And I love church. I think it's fun. I love public worship and it's something that's really special to me. And I, I would love to do it all the time if I really could, but you know, that's not an option. And we're supposed to work, do good works and then come here together and join as a church. Um, in Acts 2, 42 through 44, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. And I think it's so special because God wants us to come together and to break the bread and to worship and pray together and be a body together. And that's, that's just something special. Like You hear like, oh, let's go be a class together. Or, oh, we're going to go and be a team together. But this is a body, like one union of people together. And that's so special. And I know that sometimes it's awkward. Like you might have to go to a local church for like a week and sit alone and be kind of scared. But then become then you'll slowly become part of that body as you keep continuing to go. Or maybe it comes it means coming to Thursday night worship more regularly or going to the Tize worships if that works better for you or taking communion on Monday nights. Whatever it is that you can become involved in ways to worship with other Christians. That's what the, that piece is really talking about. And then the last one before is service. And this is my personal favorite because I think it's so cool, like how I talked about stepping out earlier. First, you're by yourself and you read, you read the word and you see what it has to say. And then you go out and you share it with your friends and you, and you get in those small groups and you have these like really, really intense conversations about what it all means and what what is this saying? And you talk about what it all is considered to be together. And then we come together as a big community at the beginning or the end of each week. And we just worship and praise God and give him all the glory for an hour of our day. And then we have the greatest chance to just go take it out into the world and take it to everyone else. So we all have different gifts so that we can go and do this piece where we go and take it beyond the laws of the church and beyond your small, tight-knit Christian community. And um, in 1 Peter 4.10, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Because we're all given different ways that we can serve through our spiritual gifts. Like, for me personally, my, thing, my favorite thing that I do with my life ever is that um, I'm a camp counselor at a camp for kids with disabilities that I was talking about earlier. And that's just something that God has laid that population of people on my heart to go and serve them and also I'm really loud and obnoxious so it's like heaven I, I love it so much I love that I can just be my crazy self for three months of the summer and so that's the way that I love to serve but if you ask me to serve by cleaning go check out my dorm room okay I'm gonna move on <laughs> but um it is clear that God asks us to serve in the Bible and that he calls us to go and be stewards and to take his word out into the world and show others what it means to follow in the light of Christ. And so we need to continue searching for those ways that we can go out and make the opportunities to go and serve him and reach the unreached. So when we look at all these pieces together, you can kind of see how they fit together and how they mold into one another and how they're really important to what it means to walking with God. And we hear in the Bible that faith without works is absolutely nothing. It, you can believe and believe, but if you're not working towards working towards something and trying to grow, it doesn't mean anything. Um, being stagnant isn't what being a Christian is about. We can't just stay in one place. We have to start moving towards the kingdom as we continue to go on with our life. And I think that's so special that God gives us so many different ways that we can do it. Like, if you look at this, there obviously there are four groups and. Some of you guys might have one or two of these that like really pop out to you as like, oh, I definitely have that covered in my life, or that's something that I really am good at. Like for me, the like service in the church, I'm like I said, I'm really loud and really outgoing, I guess you could say. And so chances for me to be with lots of people 
is wonderful for me, and I really flourish in those opportunities, but when it comes to personal, and you have me sit down quietly for half an hour, I can't do it. I can't do it without faces. I feel I get very uncomfortable sometimes sitting in silence alone. That's just me being honest with you guys. Like, that's something that I really struggle with, and I try to work on more in my walk. But I want to encourage all of you guys to take a look at this tonight and think about what you're missing, where you can add things on to not like this isn't like a checklist of what you need to be doing in your walk with Christ. These are just things that are going to help you grow and continue to not be stagnant in your faith. Because as we get towards the end of the semester, or not the end of the semester, as we're right, week three, <laughs> at week three we start to get busy, we start to have other commitments, and it gets harder to carve out the time for God. But I want to encourage all of you guys because have you ever, you know how I was telling that story about my mom coming in to turn off the TV, I get all mad about that. Have you ever had God come in and turn off the TV in your life where he just, he takes away the distraction because you aren't listening. And sometimes God has to do that where he comes in and it, and it stinks sometimes. We're really invested in some of the things that are very important and that he loves that we enjoy on this earth. But as Christians, we need to get up before he has to turn off the TV. And we need to put some feet to our faith and take action towards growing in our faith. Amen.